Hey guys, Owen here with SCI. I'm joined by Nick. Nick, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, um, I'm a former graduate. I graduated in 2023. Okay. Um, came across the program like a lot of people do these days, watching videos on YouTube. Yeah. I actually think it was a Hickok 45 yeah. uh, video. Um, I was uh, rehabbing from shoulder surgery and was told I needed to find a new career. Yeah. So, you know, like anybody in their 30s that... I did the same thing. <laughs> ...that gets told, hey, uh, everything you knew before, throw it out the window. Yeah. Start from square one. Um, I I had a couple uh, boxes I wanted to check. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to be my own boss, have the freedom to work when I wanted. Yeah, of course. Raise my kids and uh, the program checked those boxes. Now, we, we talked a little bit, because you mentioned you did a little bit of research about before you actually enrolled in the program. We talked a yeah. little bit, you mentioned there was a couple other schools. What was the determining factor that ultimately led to SDI? For me, it was the hands-on portion. Yeah, that, that's, yeah of course. That's how I learned. Um, everything that I've done so far in life has been hands-on. Yeah. Um, I've been a auto mechanic, a boat mechanic, yeah. stuff like that. And that's everything I've learned from just doing it. Yeah. So I, I was deterred from some of the other programs that were out there because they were just videos and textbooks and textbooks. And that's not how I learned. Yeah. So having the hands-on portion with all and, the labs. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it. the other part of it that I didn't think I was going to like that I actually ended up was the needing to film yeah, the yeah, labs. Yeah, of course. Because everything now is social media content, YouTube videos, and it helped get comfortable in front of a camera. Which is hard to do. It is. Yeah, you know? yeah it, I get it. This week has been full of nothing but standing in front of a camera and talking to people. Yeah. So... <laughs> I had the same issue whenever I was actually doing the labs. A lot of times, if I could, I would have elected to, to do just the photographs. But there are many assignments that required us to be on camera, and it, it really is a skill set that is highly valued nowadays. Yeah. Um, I think when I did the program, I only did one of the labs by PowerPoint. Yeah. And after I did that, I think the PowerPoint ended up being like 42 slides. Yeah. And I was like, no. Seven minute video or 42 slides. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I chose one of the harder firearms to field strip and gotcha. document. I did a CZ 75. Nice. So I took it completely down, and that's got a lot of moving parts inside yeah, of, of it. So you have to label every single part. You yeah. Know? and describe what it does it, it it took a lot of time but no i totally get it and that's exactly the same school of thought i came from especially having to be on camera now now that you've enrolled let's w walk through a little bit about your time during sci so you uh, you're a, a big hands-on you l enjoy the labs things like that what are some of the courses that really spoke to you um ballistics was one yeah um learning about trajectory and nodes and uh, yeah. how seating depth can alter uh, the accuracy of the bullet. Yeah. So that was a good one, um, which I actually had when we had to interview somebody and ask them questions. Yeah. Um, I actually, I think I had a leg up on everybody in my class because my neighbor um, was a competition long range shooter. That definitely helps. So we talked for hours and he is just an absolute wealth of knowledge. His name yeah. is Steve Jones um, and he makes his own rifles. Um, just an all around good guy. So Steve has his own shop. He's a fully functional yeah. shop and things um, like that. He, he's retired now. Okay. Um, he was doing uh, stock adjusters yeah. and custom rifles. Um, I actually was able to purchase his stock adjuster business, which okay. I added that in conjunction to starting my own business uh, yeah, after I, I graduated. 
So tell me a little bit about the relationship between you and him, because it sounds like it's, I don't want to say apprenticeship really, but while you're enrolled at SDI, you're able to go to this senior level person that was that had this knowledge. Tell me a little bit about y'all's relationship and how that started and things. So uh, um, I met him back in 2011. Yeah. Um, and it was just, he moved to the neighborhood, introduced myself. Uh, at the time, I was managing an auto parts store, so yeah. he would come up to me with uh, car questions. I'd help him out, and then we started doing some trade work. Um, he would work on my shotgun. That's really cool. And then he worked on one of my rifles, and then we just we became good friends. And yeah. then uh, I told him I was going to do this program, and he said, basically, it, it was a open invitation. You have any questions? You need any access to anything you don't have? That's really cool. How telling a person that's already doing this, uh, especially like, hey, I'm about to enroll in this online gunsmithing school. How did he feel about that? His initial was, how are they going to teach you? Yeah. From a computer. Yeah. And I said, well, there's there's a lot of hands-on stuff. Yeah. And. Um, he actually, when I did the hydro dipping uh, lab, he wanted to come over and see it because That's he had so never cool. seen it in person. Yeah. So I did a, um, I think I did a uh, plastic training pistol. Yeah. For my hydro dipping, and he was just absolutely amazed by it. Yeah. When we when I finished filming the the video, he pulled me aside and he goes, "I have a barrel I want you to do." That's so cool. He, he's like, it's. I don't want to take the gun apart yeah. to send it out and get blasted and Cerakoted. He's like, can you, can you do it? Yeah. So I did it for him with leftover film that I had from the lab. Yeah. I don't want to say that you made a believer out of him, but it was really. it's really cool for you to be able to show him, like, hey, this is how we learn yeah. hands-on. Well, and there was other uh, stuff along the way where... I would tell him, oh, we're, we're going over this in, in class. And then he would start talking, oh, did they show you this? Did they yeah. show you this? What about this? And I was able to, to say, yeah, uh, we went over uh, the recoil lug in different styles. and Yeah, that's super uh, cool. Lapping uh, the, the barrels rings. and uh, the locking lugs yeah. on the, the bolts. And he was like, okay. Yeah. And he's a, um, he had a uh, rifle that he was betting the action on. Yeah. So when he was doing stuff like that, he, hey, I'm, I'm doing this. If you want to learn it, come over. That's really cool. So, you know, he, he would show me his little tips, tricks, yeah. and that's stuff that, that takes the, the entry level. I'm not gonna say entry level knowledge. Yeah. But the the platform that the school provides and allowed me to elevate it. Just elevate it a little bit. Yeah, and give me a leg up on other students. And yeah, of course, it's really cool to have that wealth of knowledge, especially especially for new gunsmiths and new students. Whenever you're working on, on these different parts or different guns and stuff, you know what you're doing, but it's having that confidence. And it's really cool to be able to have somebody be like, all right, yeah, I'll watch you do it. Or, hey, I'm about to do this. And you know, maybe you've already done it, but you, seeing somebody else do it gives you the confidence to actually start doing it yourself. Yeah, and the, the other uh, thing that I found really beneficial was the instructors. Yeah. Because a lot of these guys, it this is like a side gig yeah. for them teaching the, the classes. And they're, they're doing it, their boots on the ground in the industry so if when we would do the the weekly forum questions yeah. and stuff you you got to learn a lot more about the other people in your class even though you're not sitting in a room with yeah. them you know they, i mean the discussion share, boards they get involved with them yeah. as well not just the other students but other teachers the, uh, the teachers some of the really good teachers would hop into the discussion boards and actually go back and forth with some of the students. I, I had a very similar experience. Yeah, and um, on one of them, we were talking about uh, business startups yeah. and 
and whatnot, and one of the instructors actually pointed me in a direction of a liability insurance company that would yeah. cover me That's because cool. he had the same issue when he was starting out. Yeah. So it, it's stuff like that that's very, very helpful and yeah. goes above and beyond just the the course. Yeah, yeah. Now that you've graduated, what are you doing now? So um, I opened my own business. Um, turns out in my state, everything that's required to be a certified gunsmith yeah. is the same licensing and permitting as a firearms dealer. Gotcha. So while I was applying for everything, I just said, all right, looks like we're going to be a firearms dealer yeah. now. Um, so I do a lot of uh, firearm sales, but I also do a lot of re repair work. Gotcha. Um, I'm active in the community. I help people navigate gun purchasing a um, little bit better than a lot of the big box stores because yeah, yeah. it's a, a personalized experience. Yeah. So I have the, I try and make it basically an, an easygoing uh, interaction. Yeah. So if they, there is no stupid question and yeah. I, I make everybody feel comfortable and treat them how I want to be treated. And, and what's the name of the, uh, the business? It's BKM Customs. Okay. Um, the, it's the initials of my kids. Nice. So uh, being able to, to have something that family oriented because that's basically why I went yeah. down this road in the first place. Yeah, of course. And you, we talked a little bit before we even hopped on camera and you were mentioning some prototypes that you were working on. Tell me a little bit about those. Yes. Um, so I had mentioned that I had purchased uh, Steve's recoilless business. Yeah. Um, so he, he manufactured stock adjusters. Yeah. And how they came about was he was shooting a Magnum rifle in his younger days and he actually uh, didn't have it fit right on his shoulder yeah. and severed uh, all of his uh, nerves. Oh man. And some of them regenerated, but a lot of them didn't. didn't. So he thought to himself, I need to come up with a way to allow me to move the pad. So uh, Lots of years of R&D. He, he came out with uh, the same design that I'm manufacturing today. And um, I actually have a couple units with me. Uh, okay. One that we just released and um, one that is where it all started. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. So this is the original Jones adjuster. Yeah. So the way it works is this back plate mounts to the stock. Yeah. You scribe the stock to it. Okay. You grind that to fit, and you do the same thing with the recoil pad. So this gets ground as an assembly with the recoil pad. Oh, and so you can move the recoil pad around. Yep. While the stock stays yep. stationary. So it allows you to, to move the pad to fit your, your shoulder pocket, yeah. which uh, reduces felt recoil because uh, nobody's shoulder is straight up and down yeah the gun might be perfect but nobody's shoulder pockets perfect yeah exactly so um, we're evolving the style of adjustment into other platforms yeah so this is uh, one that we actually just released the other day okay and this is a uh, direct fit for a any stock that runs a magpul prs pad gotcha and uh, right now the the chisel machining stock um, the work that they've done with the Beretta 1301 um, is really, really top-notch work. So that's really cool. I, I've had a few people ask if I was going to do one for it, so I was able to to get my hands on one of the stocks, made a prototype. Yeah. And uh, it allow it'll allow just just that much more adjustment. Yeah, that's and amazing. Make the the firearm a little little more enjoyable to shoot. And, and how smooth this is is ridiculous. Yeah, that's really and, really cool. And once um, we face mill everything, so the texture actually helps with the uh, the retention. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so th that's the original style. We also have a through the the pad version. Gotcha. Um, for the people that 
you know, like to loan their guns out or um, they have a rental business and they want to be able to fit it to a myriad of people yeah. coming through the door. Um, the other benefit to that one is if you have a fitted case. Yeah. If your pad's canted, you know, 30 degrees off the gun, it's not going to yeah. fit back in the, your nice uh, case. So <laughs> being able to return it back to a neutral state yeah. is, is very helpful. What piece of advice would you give to anybody who's thinking about enrolling at SEI? Because it sounds like you did your research before yeah. actually enrolling at SEI and you finally determined that, hey, this is the one for me. What piece of advice would you give to those people thinking about it? If you're on the fence about enrolling in SDI, look at the grad videos, the testimonials, yeah. and compare it to some of the other programs that are out there. A lot of them do not do the hands-on. They don't provide all the tools to get you started. Yeah. Just for our viewers, tell them how they can find out more information about BKM Customs. Um, I have two social media accounts. I have one for the BKM custom side on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. And then I also have uh, the Recoilless Engineering on Facebook and Instagram. And then uh, the website, no matter if you put in bkmcustoms.com or uh, recoil-less.com, yeah. it takes you to the same website. Awesome, awesome. Yep. Nick, thank you so much for your time. Again, if you want more information, you can always go to sdi.edu. Thank you. You're welcome.